we are moving in some delicate issues. And this is my cry and this is my prayer for you. Don't listen to anything that I say that you can't find in the Scripture. I'm not looking to try to convince you of something. I'm trying to say to you, take your beliefs and filter it through the Word of God and be honest with yourself. Does it match with what God wants me to think and do, or does it not? If you don't believe in the Bible, it probably won't fit. Because I'm telling you, I believe the Bible is authoritative. It's God's words. It's his ways. It's his mind. It's understanding. Hang with us. That's good that you hang with it. I don't care if you have doubts. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just telling you, we are filtering it through the word. I'm not up here trying to convince you of anything. I'm trying to tell you 13 times I showed you last week, false prophets and false teachers would devastate the last days with lies, with hypocrisy. Listen, with fables with stories because many people have itching ears. That means you want to hear something that you could get away with because we all toe the line of grace. That means, like, like say, you know, it says speed limit 35. That means you could technically drive 33 and be okay, right? But me, if you drive 35, you're slow. Why are you going so slow? I'm towing the edge. Does it make sense? All of us do. How much can I get away with? How much can I get away with? And so I'm, I, I'm, I'm just begging you that you filter it through the word. Everything that I say, it's going to get tough in here the next week, but I'm doing it because itching ears, you want to hear what you want to hear. Some people would like to go do something, but they know it's wrong deep down, but they'll have heap up teachers that will say what they want to say. And this is the danger of the gospel in the last days in America that's, that's already causing the chaos that we have turned from what the Word says, and we twist it, and we just angle this little story, and, and little fables become what we say or what we believe. And we're challenging those things. It closes in Acts 20. I'm not going to read it. Paul said, for three years I warned you and I begged you to watch out because when I leave, savage wolves will come in to destroy the flock. I gave you 13 times last week. That's the 14th one. I have around 20-some passages that tell there will be false twisting of the thing. So today I'm going to challenge as I open up. This may be the easiest one and the most hardest one. And listen, I am going to step on your toes, and I hope you walk out with your toes stepped on this morning. I, listen to me, but I'm not asking you to believe. I'm not even telling you where I stand. I just want to challenge our because all the politicians have hook, line, and sinker the church and sucked you in. To think if you vote for the right one, it's going to fix your problems. And if you become part of the right party, and everybody else that isn't a part of the right party, they are less than you. And if you do this one, because I'm going to, let me just ask this. If I title my message this, put it up, Jonathan, if you will, for me, please. Arguing with Jesus over politics. If I can prove to you Jesus had a deep, deep political argument with the political leaders of those days, would you rethink your thoughts on politics? I'll just present the word, and then you make your own choice. It's a story we all know in Mark chapter 13. I'm rushing, Pastor Damon. I'm moving through here. The boss has put the timer on me, and I got to move through. Mark 12, I'm just joking around. Mark 12. It's a story you all know, but I promise you in Jesus' name, I'll show you something you've never seen. I promise. Just watch. Mark chapter 12. Then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the who? Notice it's not the Sadducees, who many of you would just assume. Sometimes you just read through. Oh, Pharisees, Sadducees. Ooh, watch, watch, watch what it says. The Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. They're trying to trap him. He has just set them up a, a couple chapters before, and now they're going to try to set him up to catch him in his words. All right? Because when it gets political, we start trying to catch people in their words. And then demean them and condemn them because they catch them in his words. Verse 14. And when they had come, they said to the teacher, 
We know that you are true and care about no one, for you do not regard the person. And here's what they're saying. You're so holy and you're so right. And we know. Be careful when people come to you in flattery. Tell you you're the king today and they'll crucify you tomorrow. Oh, I've had people who told me I'm the greatest preacher they ever heard for like six months. And then all of a sudden, they're madder and a hornet and slamming me on Facebook. It actually scares me. If you're new in here, don't come up and tell me I preach the greatest sermon you've ever said. Don't, don't come up and say that to me. Just don't do it. No, and flattery. But you teach the way of God as truth. So they ask the question, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now let me stop right there before we move ahead. The Herodians were only mentioned two times in Scripture. Once more, it was mentioned three times. Two of them are a repeat, are a repeat story. But the Herodians were Jews who had turned over to the authority of the Roman government and said, this is the right way. We as Jews should do this. This is how we live, and we are here to support Herod. We're here to support the temple. Look what he did for us. Look how great he is. Look how powerful he is. And the, the Pharisees and Sadducees hated him because said, you sold out. You bunch of sellouts. Now, the Pharisees, most of you know, they're the legal dudes. They're the dudes that make you wear a dress to church and you wear a tie and you don't wear a hat in church and you don't, I mean, even me drinking a monster. And I've had people on here drinking a coffee monster saying, that's the number of the beast, that's the devil. That's a Pharisee. You don't even know how to read Hebrew. Don't tell me it's 666 because technically in Hebrew, it's probably 661. So you don't even know what you're talking about. We'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that there. That, that's, the relig that's the dudes we're talking about, right? You know, the crazy thing is they're the most religious, but they're the, I mean, they'll kill you. Real religious people are scary. I'll leave that alone. Pastor Damon, I'm moving ahead. Herodians and the Pharisees notice it too. And isn't it weird how two hater, two hater groups come together to attack Jesus? It's funny how your enemies will gather together to attack you. We'll, we'll move on there. No, they asked the question, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Notice they're not asking for a sermon. They're just saying yes or no. That's what your politicians want to know of you. You Democrat or Republican, that's your only choice. Let's move on. Verse 15. Oh, yeah, I'm going there. Notice again. They just ask the question and they ask it again. Shall we pay or shall we not? The Republicans and the Democrats are oddly against each other, but they will try to demand that you do it their way and think their way and be a part of their group and you can do nothing else. And then they will even define, they have tried to define to the church what we should believe. You have to do this to be a Democrat. You have to believe in this to be a Republican. And then the church is bought in, and we see people on both sides, and we're looking at each other. I thought we were on a team, but the Democrats say we can't. The Republicans say we can't. And then we let them infiltrate, and then we're slamming each other on Facebook and defriending one another and demeaning each other and looking down at each other. Like, dude, you got, you got caught up by Caesar. I thought you served God. Tell me. Make a choice. But Jesus refuses to answer their political question. But he gets really political. He's not like our politicians who actually won't answer. They make you want to answer, but you pin them down to the corner. And you can't get the truth out of them. And I'm, I'm going on, Pastor Damon. I'm not saying a word. I'm moving right on. Because this is not about my opinion. I'm challenging you again. Let me say it again. If I can challenge you what Jesus said about politics, will you rethink yours? I'm not asking you to believe what I believe. As a matter of fact, you won't find out what I believe up here today. But you will find out what Jesus says about his political stance. Jesus is going to cause a revolution, but it's not a revolution like you think. The 
tax that's being discussed is a head tax. It's a tribute to Caesar. There are two taxes mentioned in the, Old, in the New Testament. One is where they would pay taxes for the temple and for the roads and for all their things to take place. They never argued that. As a matter of fact, in Mark 17, I believe it is, where, they, where Jesus, where they went to, they asked, they asked Peter, will Jesus pay taxes? And Peter walking in, Jesus already was at the front door, and Jesus said, tell him, yeah, we'll pay the taxes. Go, go fish. And they went and they found three coins in the mouth. And actually, Jesus double paid his taxes. Actually, triple paid his taxes, if you want to get technical about it. But he paid the taxes. Notice something. Jesus didn't have it in his pocket to get out. He had to send Peter fishing for it. Okay, just a just thought. Just thought. But this point is the word denarius, and it refers to head tax. This was a tax that was set on the, on the Roman or on the Jewish people 25 years before. And it said, because you are the gar- a part of the great Augustus family, the great Caesar, our God, because you are part of a, the Roman society who is the greatest and the greatest country ever and the ruler of the whole world, we're going to demand everybody pay a denarius tax once a year. The Jews hate it. The denarius tax is just simply like, it's almost like one, it's like the, the one day salary of a poverty worker. So it would, and I don't mean poverty, that's a bad way to say it. L- let me say it this way. It would be like you make less than a minimum wage, and it would be one day of your salary out of the whole year. So it's not a significant amount, but it is money. And the Jews, when Caesar put the law, they freaked out. A guy named Judas of Galilee led a revolt 25 years before they asked this question to Jesus. And he said, no Jew will pay the tax. Let's get together. Let's fight the city. Let's fight the government. We will not pay the tax. He, I mean, they stormed. Actually, I mean, he got a lot of the Jews to stand with him, and they fought, and they wouldn't pay their, and they, they refused to pay the tax. Then next, he got armed guys that all agreed with him, and guess where they went? They stormed the city. They marched in parading with their signs, and then they cleansed the temple. They went through the temple causing havoc. They got rid of everything that had to do with Caesar, everything that had any stuff, any money, anything they got rid of. They tried to say, God will be our God and there will be no other. They led a revolt that Josephus tells us in the history of the Jews that was a wild, wild city revolt where, I mean, they were burning down things and fighting things, and we've seen that happen in our society just in the last few years, right? Well, Rome came in and smoked on him. Actually, every person that never paid their taxes, they burned their houses down when you go study the history of it. But I want you to understand the consequence when they say this to Jesus. They've just watched Jesus spin. Now, we're in Mark chapter what? 12. They've watched Jesus, if we just use the book of Mark, they've watched him use 11 chapters where he's preaching what? The kingdom of God is at hand. Right? Right? What was Judas the Galilean preaching? The kingdom. Now, if you go back to Mark chapter 11, Jesus just cleansed the temple. Chapter before, Jesus cleanses the temple. Right? So he's preaching kingdom. He's preaching cleanse the temple. Judas of Galilee just did that. Now they're saying do you pay taxes to Caesar or not? You know what they're asking? If you say no, we're going to revolt on the city. It's a resurrection of that message, and we're going to revolt on the city. We're going to revolt against the Romans, and we will storm the capital. We're going in. We're taking over. No more. We're doing this for God. And they're saying... and. They're saying, if you do pay the taxes, you're saying you're like the Herodians. We love Rome, and really God sent us Rome, and we're just going to be a part of Rome, and we we celebrate Rome, and we celebrate all the things that are taking place there. It's a set-up question. That's what the Democrats and Republicans are doing to you, setting you up, dividing us. He just did the two things. Are you a revolutionary or are you not? 
Are you going to do it or are you not? And Jesus does give him an answer. The thing is, at the end of it, and I won't even read it, he basically comes to this point where they're so marveled at his answer, they walk away astonished. How many politicians walk away at a church's answer? Number one, Jesus does this. He refuses to take political sides. He refuses to take political sides because he says, render taxes to Caesar, render to God. That's God's. They said, we want one answer. Which one? Right? He refuses the political sides. Choose one or the other. It's what the government does to us now. Do you know that in our society, if you choose to be whole life, and I say whole life because I'm just setting fullness of the term. I'm using the term pro-life. But I'm using the term from the womb to the tomb. A person values life and think life is significant and think that we care. And so when I say whole life, I, I say a, a group of people who will say, I am whole life. I believe the significance in every single individual from the womb to the tomb is significant. If I was to say that, you'd say, oh, I'm Republican. Like, all Democrats, like, want to kill. But that's what they do. They titled you. They did it. They labeled you. But if you say, I'm deep into social justice. I think we ought to help the oppressed and we ought to help the poor and we help their, they'll label you Democrat. Well, that don't say I'm, who gave you the right to label me? Who says I can't be both? What's a politician trying to tell me? I can't, I've got to pick a side. Oh, I could use other terms that will label you. Marriage between a man and woman. Got to be Republican. Racial justice. Got to be a Democrat. Who said you could label me? What if I'm all for Quiet in the house. And I'm trying to be humble here. I really am. I'm trying to do, I, I know this is a painful thing, but I just want you to see, we've been set up, friends. We've been set up. We have been set up. The worldly political system will try to divide us and break us. And just let me say this. Don't mix God with Caesar. What amazes me is how pastors try to take and say, well, you're not godly if you're not Republican. Or you're not really serving God if you're not. How could you do that? How could you do that? Dude, you mixed up Caesar and God. You let them filter you through this thing. Just let me say clearly what's going to happen political-wise. Clearly, without doubt, in the Scripture, that look, there's going to be such a divide, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And then there's going to be this guy come on the scene, and there's going to be a crazy thing happen, and he's going to be, there's going to be some miracles that take place, and then all of a sudden, he's going to bring us together. And everybody's going to say, peace, peace, the world's better. Here's our political leader that can save us. The Bible calls him the Antichrist. The Antichrist looks like Jesus, dude. You're not going to have 666 stamped on your head. Get that stupid stuff out of your head. Got nothing to do with that. He's going to look like Jesus, and it's going to, he's going to say, I'll bring peace. I'll bring. The political guys say, I'm your answer. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. Let me just tell you the truth. They're all richer and snot. I heard people say, I ain't voting for Trump because he's, I'm not saying, you should, I don't hear me, I'm just telling, I heard, I heard people say, I, I, Trump is rich, I'm going to vote for Biden, he's for people. Biden is a, a filthy rich, doesn't even know what to do with all of his money. Neither one Trump nor Biden knew how to, 
live like you and I. They're not worried about their insurance. They're not worried about their deductible. They're not worried about paying for their house. They're not worried about their retirement. They got so many millions of dollars. They don't care about you. They don't even know how to live like you. And they, they, they got you into buying in thinking, oh, this, this one's against all the, this one will punish the rich. All political power does is change the, the pawns on the game. They're still all about power. They're still all about authority. And they will help people who like them and vote for them and help them. But if you don't like them, they'll crucify you. And I don't care which party, both of them. And they're, they're worried about staying in power, if the truth be known. I just said the truth, and I'll leave that. What are you going to do? And I say, don't mix up God or Caesar. Ask for a denarius, a coin, it says. Bring me a denarius that I may see it. Let's talk about what that denarius is. A denarius is that head tax. Here's what it has. It has um, Tiberius Caesar on the front. If you'll show us an image of that, Jonathan, I think you have that. There's a coin. Actually, I mean, and we know this, guys, because you can buy. I almost bought one for 300 bucks. I was actually lusting at buying one. Then I realized my wife would kill me. The board wouldn't let me do that as a church, so I'm the word without one. I wanted to hold one, but on the back is a picture of his mother. Now, listen, so, so here's the story with the Caesars. They're, they're ruling kings. Now, listen, their kingship means they're God. You don't mess with them. You don't vote for them. You do what they say, and they tell you what to do, and there ain't no fight, and there ain't no revolting. Just like the Jews who, who, who revolted against tax, they burned down every person that didn't pay taxes. They burned their houses down. Say, what are you going to do now? They didn't care. Actually, they print the money. But this, this Caesar, actually, it was his father, Julius Caesar. Now, listen, it's not even actually his real name. They're titles that we give, like president and SCOTUS and different titles and things that we give. Their titles they give, but Julius Caesar was a ruler before Tiberius Caesar, and, and Julius Caesar died. He didn't have a son to hand over the kingdom, so he handed over to his stepson, which would be Tiberius. But at this point, they're calling Julius Caesar God. All right? And they print, they had all the money, they printed their own coins and put their own face on top of the coin. So this is Tiberius Caesar there. Guess who printed that coin? Tiberius printed his own coin. He owned it. His mom on the back. And in Latin it reads, listen to me, go search it out. You'll find out that I'm telling you the truth. In Latin it reads, Augustus Caesar, God, and the Son of God on the front. And on the back it reads Pontifus Maximus, high priest. So they say to Jesus, do I pay tax? Do I use this coin to pay tax? Jesus said, whose image is on it? I think it's real question. I think his real answer is just simply this. You can give to Caesar what he wants, but don't ultimately give him all that he wants. If he printed it, he owned it. Let him have it. It's legally his anyway. But don't call him God, nor son of God, nor the high priest. Because there are two kingdoms here, one of Caesar and one of God. You all right? I don't think Jesus is, well, may I say it this way. Don't give to government or to politics the allegiance that you should have towards God, that you give to your political party. Be careful what you, should you pay your taxes? Pay your taxes! But we're not calling him God. He's not our savior. He's not our answer. Should you vote? Yeah! You're right! But my God, what kind of a spirit do you have when you demean somebody else who didn't vote like you? Or did That's not a Christ spirit. You just bought into the game. Hear me out again. Before I say it, I have to drink water because I know you're going to be looking at me weird. 
I know I'm challenging you, and I'm trying to. I'm telling you, they, they, they sold us out, and we have sold our souls. And I think God's saying, hold on here. What are you doing? I mean, we are so loyal to now our political parties, we hate the other person. You won't even talk to them in church because you know they voted different than you. People quit come to church because, hello. Damon, am I doing all right? This is my friend up here. I got to make sure I don't get myself in trouble. <laughs> Whose image is on it? Whose icon is on it? Is on it? Give Caesar money, but not allegiance. What do you give a tyrant? Well, give him. That's his. That's his. Let him have it. But don't worship him as God. This is political as Jesus' statement is. It's also not political. But it's a clear answer that, fool, that just mesmerized them. How do I do this, God? I want to say something I'm concerned about saying it. I want to make sure that I'm hearing from the Lord. He will bring change. Listen to me close. Jesus is going to bring change. I'm going to show you how he's going to bring change. Let's say that. No, I'm going to say this. I said at first service, you never scolded me, so I've got to say. <laughs> the stupidity of our arguments, like I could say, was the election stolen? Ooh. <laughs> you all felt it when I said it. One day we're in the staff, sitting up in the room, and we're talking. And we're throwing out our stuff. And all of a sudden, we hear Pastor Augustine laughing over in the corner. I'm like, what? People are trying to talk. He's laughing. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, you stupid Americans. <laughs> and he was serious. I said, what do you mean? He goes, like you think every election's been legal that you've had. You remember the days we were counting chads? We were counting little pieces of cardboard on paper who've been passed through 300 hands when we had computers and everything else that could have done it, and we're counting little pieces of paper that could have fall off or stay off, and the people that won were excited and said, this is legit. And the people that didn't say, that's a cheated election. Should you vote? Absolutely vote. Not sure my vote counts, but I should vote. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor Damon. <laughs> Verse 15. This is how he's going to do it. This is how he's going to do it. Shall we pay or shall we not? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, why do you test me? Notice the next words. This is what set me on fire. What does he say? I don't know that he had one. Why didn't he pull one out of his own? Bag? Or we know that Judas carried the money bag. Why didn't he say, Judas, give me a denarius? A king without a quarter. I know the prosperity gospel years, and I love some of these guys. I'm not, and I'm not, I don't, but some people said Jesus was rich. That's the reason they had the money keeper. Listen, Jesus says, and, and I didn't even put it up there, in Matthew 8, 20, if you want to just write it for later. Jesus looked at the people and says, Foxes have holes to sleep in. Birds have nests to sleep in. The Son of Man doesn't even have anywhere to lay his head. 
You're a king and you don't have a house. You have no money. You live among the poor and the hurting and the oppressed. You hang out with people who don't live holy lifestyles. What kind of kingdom is this? Just let me tell you the truth. Oh, help me do this, Lord. I'm, I'm calming myself because I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not just shouting at pain or, or something that I, I want you to hear. And I want you to measure this through God's word. He's not sitting here saying, I'm going to replace Caesar as king. Jesus is not looking for a vote that he can revolt and turn it all over. Right? He's saying this kingdom is different. He's going to turn the game upside down. This is how Jesus taught the kingdom in Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Just simply, four values that are Jesus' political, his philosophy, the kingdom stance. Luke 6, chapter, verse 20 says this. He lifted up his eyes toward disciples and said, Blessed are you, for yours is the kingdom of God. He's talking about power. The next one. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be. He's talking about success. The next one. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. He's talking about comfort. And the last one he says, Blessed are you when men hate you and they exclude you and they revile you and they cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. He's talking about recognition. Let me state clearly what your political parties want. Power, success, comfort, and recognition. Let me state sadly, that's what you and I are looking for. You'll sacrifice time with your five-year-old so you'll have a bigger retirement. You'll sacrifice your marriage because you've got to go to work. You'll move to some place you don't even want or don't even like. Let me just tell you the truth. No matter who you vote for, all they're going to do is build their own team around them, and they'll like who they like. They'll empower who they want, and they'll cause you to try to hate the people that are not in there. And then they'll try to stay in power forever. And they'll say whatever to stay in power forever. I said this in the first service. We should probably elect them for four years and put them in jail for four years and fix this mess. Because they live for decisions of power, success, comfort, recognition. And then I question you, do you? Why is it Jesus told us to live one way, but we're making decisions based around money or, or, my, 401, or, or my 401B? What if they shut the banks down tomorrow? What, what are you going to do with your 401B that you don't even have the money? And don't think it hasn't happened. You know, Deshaun, our friend in, in um, Sri Lanka, you, you understand their, their government was stealing so much money that last month Deshaun was sending us messages saying, my God, we're dying over here. The, the China, all the, com all the countries won't send any more supplies, no more gas, no more food, no more food, nothing because their government was stealing all the money the country revolted and just and then he just ran to India for his life and took all the money with him and they have no food, they have no power, they have no gas. They're, Deshaun told me they send a guy from church like to wait in line eight to ten hours a day to see if they can get one liter of gasoline. And Deshaun says it doesn't matter how much money you have, there's no food.
He didn't know that on a Saturday night. It was a Sunday morning that all hell broke loose, and there it was. Would have filled the tank up and added if we had known. You all right? Everybody we elect, that's all they want is their own power, their own way, their own authority, their comfort. Like I said, hey, none of them worried about their insurance. None of them, wor- they don't care gas is $5 a gallon. They're millionaires. They don't even fill their own tank up. They have somebody else do it. A king without power, a king without success. You do realize that was the question? Caesar or God? But when you look at it, this king has no power. He doesn't even own a home. He has no money. He has no recognition. They try to, they try to say, oh, this, and he leaves. He doesn't want the recognition. Don't tell him who I am. He's not letting him puff him up. But this king says, give it all to me. I want it all. I want recognition. Bow to me. And you have to make a decision of which kingdom you would like to be a part of. Because let me tell you about this kingdom. let, Let me say this. They thought they'd stop it. They were scared of Jesus because he was different. And they thought they could stop it. Barabbas or Jesus? They chose to kill Jesus. But do you know what they did when they killed it? It resurrected. You can't stop it. This kingdom that we're talking about can never be stopped. You can't put laws against it to stop it. You can outlaw it, but you won't stop it. The more you persecute, listen, the more you persecute it, the more you will cause it to grow. The more you defame it, the more you will cause it to be stronger. They burned the Bible for years, and soon they will say, it's hate speech. It's illegal talking down to people, but they can't stop it. And the more they fight it, the more they resurrect it. The more they shoot against it, the more they resurrect it. The church is Jesus's, and he will build his church. It's his kingdom. But it's not the power struggle of the outside. We don't do it by recognition, by the greatness of our buildings, by the greatness of our preachers, by the greatness of our worship team. We got a humble king without a coin. Do you know his message when he walked into the temple and he preached his first message? He opened the scriptures and it's in Luke. I'm closing with this. Pastor Damon, I'm going to be done early. (laughs) The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is his kingdom. This is the standards of his kingdom, and this would be his message. If you follow Jesus, this is our political stance. This is what we do. Am I saying don't don't fight for political issues? That's not at all what I'm saying. But it's in the spirit of how you fight for it. The kingdom of God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's the message. Can I say this? 
if you're going to say, I'm whole life, pro-life, good. But do it in a place where you love and you help and you see the pain other people are in and you see the position that they're struggling with and you help them. Listen, if they don't say, I, 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 abortion's murder without also saying, man, if a girl decides to keep the baby, maybe you ought to help her pay the bills. Maybe you should help raise her up. Maybe the girl we convinced that she doesn't take the life of this baby, maybe we ought to be the ones saying, we'll cover your bills while you're doing this all by yourself. It will help you and we'll support you and we'll love you. And we won't condemn you because you shouldn't have got pregnant or you don't. We do it in such a spirit of pride. We look down on others who don't have success. We look down to others who don't have recognition. Come on now. We have people in this church that say, why do we send so much to missions? Have you ever thought about the little kid who has no food and his belly's protruding because he can't even have clean water and he's starving to death? And it may not be his fault, but if we're life, if we, if we believe in helping, maybe we ought to be, we're worried more about saving so we could buy a nicer car. What are you trusting in? See, when the kingdom happens to you, it should move you. If you're Democrat, it should move you more in the middle. If you're Republican, it should move you more in the middle. If you tell me, we need to do more for social justice, I love it. Are you downtown on Tuesday night helping people? Are you working with any homeless shelters? Are you down? How about doing a tutoring program? Don't tell me I social justice, social justice, but you won't volunteer. You won't help. You won't do a tutoring program. You won't open up your garage and teach some kids who don't have fathers. You just want to demean somebody that doesn't. Hello, hey, hey, hey. You know, that's where Jesus be hanging out at. That's why they hated him. We think he'd just be in here on Sunday morning and say, man, dude, he's like, let's go to the streets. Let's go help people. Let's heal the broken heart and let's help the little kids that have no dads. How about you mentoring? Father, go mentor a little boy. Go cook a dinner. You know the you know family struggling down the road. Maybe you ought to just cook the kids some dinner. Maybe hand them a, pack, a bag lunch before they go to school. Hello? Oh, I just let the church do it for me. I mean, real people, I think it puts us into action. And not our vote. Do you, I want you to vote? Absolutely. The Essenes were religious people. Remember, they went and hid at at the Sea of Galilee. And that's where we get the books um, of the Cave of Karam, where we get all the the books that we found uh, lately that confirm the Scriptures. They went and hid from society because they said they were too holy for it. That's not what he wants you to do. He doesn't want you to be like a Pharisee, though. We dog everybody else. On Facebook, shouting your opinion. Hello. Hello. My prayer is that we understand this kingdom is upside down. It's different than what the world proceeds to tell us. What it really means, we ought to love people and help people and serve people. We ought to be the people that's doing everything. We ought to be taking our finances and our time to help and to love and to courage and whatever it takes. Instead of, and, and here's what we're worried. Oh, if I just get this retirement, you need to stop work. He'll take care of that. I'm not saying you don't have retirement. Listen to me. Listen to me. See, I'm not being political, but I am very political. I'm just saying we need to do it in a different stance. And I'm saying, I'm done with all these stupid labels. And don't ask me what label I am. I'll holler at you. I am the kingdom. I am different. I'm going to do this different. If you don't know Christ today, I want to invite you to come pray with us. And I pray today, after you hear this, that you'll rethink some of your political positions. 
And what you really believe in, I mean, if you have this strong conviction, maybe you've had an abortion and you regret it. Take your pain and use it to help somebody else. Serve someone else. Maybe you grew up in a horrible place and never had meals to eat, and you realize how bad it is in some areas, and some kids, go back and love and help. I mean, at the very least, you should be hanging out with brown bag on Sunday, but even more than that. And may God speak to us about our political stances and realize we're of a different kingdom, one that will love and serve and help. Father, we love you. For the next few weeks, it's going to be deep in here, and I just challenge you, I beg you with all my heart, come open to hear as we challenge very touching subjects for the next six weeks. God, may you be glorified in it, and may we grow in the kingdom. In Jesus' name, and the church said,